the Spanish and he cries, oh, libertad, in the, in, in the middle of his poem. And some of his Spanish is mangled, which is the kind of Spanish some of us speak in New York. And, 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 and it's all worked into this ultimate text of, um, of, uh, of New York. So that, that contribution was already there. I'll add one other note, uh, which I, I, I make on the basis of of uh, looking at, at, at this invaluable book just now. Claudio has, has included uh, the old um, uh, grand manifesto by Jose Marti, Our America, Nuestra America, meaning the, the Spanish-speaking America. So this has led me to, to reread it. And rereading it, I notice that so much of that manifesto is a beautiful essay. So much of it echoes Democratic Vistas by Walt Whitman. Democratic Vistas is, 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 is uh, it was writ, uh, published uh, uh, maybe uh, 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 10 years, 12, 13 years before, before uh, uh, I, I think before, before Marti uh, publishes his. But this clear, and there's clearly an echo. I could point from sentence to sentence and say, you know, this echoes Whitman. And uh, in saying this, I don't think I, I'm saying anything that Jose Marti, were he here, would object to. Because Marti loved Whitman, and he wrote about Whitman, and was, and in his, po his own poetry, he was influenced by Whitman. And then Marti, in turn, influences so much of Latin American poetry, and the whole rise of a new, new kind of post-romantic uh, poetry in Spanish comes, comes out of this. So the influences go both ways. Uh, uh, from uh, the Latin American and the Spanish to the larger New York, from the larger New York back to the, back to the Latin American Spanish. And I think nothing could be more beautiful than that. Thank you, Paul. Finally, we're joined by Francis Negron Muntaner, filmmaker, writer, and scholar author of Boricua Pop, Puerto Ricans and the Latinization of American Culture, among other books. Her essay, included in Hispanic New York, is The Life and Passion of Jean-Michel Basquiat, uh, and she reclaims him uh, for Latin American art in American history and in the history of art in New York. Francis. Uh, first of all, good afternoon and welcome. Uh, I work here, so um, part of the hosting committee. Um, I've been asked to talk about uh, Brooklyn-born painter Jean-Michel Basquiat, which is the chapter in Hispanic New York. And it's, uh, I would say, a more reader-friendly version than the one in Boricua Pop. Um, the chapter is an engagement with what I could call the Boricua and Basquiat. Uh, and up to the point that I wrote this essay, uh, the analysis on Basquiat's Puerto Rican context was pretty much ignored, scattered, and certainly not part of any serious conversation about Jean-Michel Basquiat's work. So by recreating this Basquiat's Puerto Rican context, I was hoping to complicate the dominant account of his work and demonstrate how an engagement with Basquiat both requires and demands and produces a certain kind of literacy in Latin American history and culture, and particularly Puerto Rican history and culture. And one of the ways that you can track that uh, is through his use of Spanish. Uh, if blackness appeared in his work as an iconic way to communicate a certain kind of alterity, Spanish functions as a hidden transcript, if you will, one that simultaneously is capable of addressing Puerto Ricans and other Spanish-speaking Latinos and Spanish-speaking people in general, and also a way to inscribe alternative histories regarding the Constitution, not only of the United States, but the Americas more broadly. Basquiat employed Spanish to multiple ends in his work. Uh, um, on the one hand, he used Spanish to demonstrate mastery over the European canon. So you'll see his scribbles of Spanish over works that reference figures like Da Vinci or Italy as a center of uh, European art. Uh, you also see Basquiat using Spanish to encode a certain kind of critical perspective about American history and culture by using words like gringo, 
uh, for instance, or using the term colonization, which is fairly rare in uh, uh, discourse uh, of the US by Americans. He also used words and unsettled their significations. For instance, the word negro, which to most English speakers you would read as, as negro. Uh, but in the context of Basquiat's work, it can also refer to the ways that black people are referring to Latin America. Uh, and to also the ambivalent ways that this term circulates among Puerto Ricans. Basquiat also deployed Spanish in his everyday life outside of the canvas as a way to negotiate class hierarchies. Uh, for instance, one of the few people to engage with this Caribbean, Hispanic Caribbean Basquiat, Thompson Farris, narrates that one day in the summer of 1986, a friend who spoke Spanish appeared at Basquiat's door in the company of a rich and famous woman. I was there and watched them walk around. Suddenly, the woman asked, point blank, how much is that painting over there? Jean-Michel, in a whisper to his friend, para ti o para ella? <laughs> is the painting for you or for her? Meaning by that high price for her, low price for you. Like Basquiat's paintings themselves, Spanish serves as a mask. Thompson Ferris concludes, when he wanted to make a covert point or camouflage a question, Basquiat switched to Spanish. It was a mask, a very handy mask. Indeed, we could recall this whole narrative, black skin, Boricua mask. Um, Basquiat's work also creatively sought to deflect, if not erase, the name of the mother, while acknowledging that everything vital came from her. I'd say, said Basquiat on more, more than one occasion, my mother gave me all the primary things. The art came from her. Not coincidentally, it was Mrs. Basquiat, who was born Matilde Andrades in Brooklyn of Puerto Rican parents, who handed her son one of his most enduring reference points to artistically visualize himself as Creole and fragmented, the book Grey's Anatomy. While it is true that as Bell Hooks has argued, Basquiat focused all his attention on examining male space, the culture of the mother, if not her particular name, is referenced by the persistent and indispensable acknowledge acknowledgement of the mother's tongue. The juxtaposition of languages and maternal memories further converges on a general faith in art as a practice of alchemy or voodoo science a performance that references Caribbean syncretic religious practices and upward mobility. Basquiat attributes his magical qualities as an artist to his mother, who he called Bruja, an ambivalent term that nevertheless acknowledges the power of creativity and transformation. Language, however, is not the only sign to encode Puerto Rican diasporic strategies. Although Basquiat himself has stated that the inspiration for the crown in his work originated in the Little Rascals logo, Basquiat's interest in, if not obsession with royalty, is shared by African Americans and Puerto Ricans and has common roots, offsetting the shame of racialization and the pain of incommensurable definitions of value. Through his paintings, Basquiat memorialized past kings on wood, glass, canvas, and wall surfaces and offered portable crowns for ordinary men and even outlaws hence affording them the dignity denied by racism, regardless of their station in life and relationship to money or the law. As with the written word, Basquiat also trusts the power of the crown as an amulet, transfiguring their socially low subjectivities into royalty. The simultaneous impulse is to be king, to invent royalty, to own, honor the dead kings and queens of race history, and to crown new kings and queens is also characteristic of Puerto Rican interventions in popular culture and an important feature of the carnival, carnival aesthetic of the Caribbean. As Ella Shohat and Robert Stam remind us, carnival sees social and political life as a perpetual crowning and uncrowning, and the permanence of change as a source of hope. Basquiat's painting Crowns, for instance, of 1981, which shows off a landscape of crown black faces is significantly also called pesoneto, which in Spanish means net worth. Many of Basquiat's paintings also focus on cabezas, heads, the locus of pride, further articulating a desire to be looked in the face and appreciated as an intellect. Yet ultimately, the Boricua in Basquiat is not the whole story not only because Basquiat's work was shaped by the deployment of other languages besides Spanish, including Italian, French, and Latin, 
high artistic traditions and so-called low trans cultures, like